This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Lead us now, Heavenly Father, as we open thy word to study today, honor thy word, the precious name of Jesus, and save souls. For Christ's sake we pray, amen. In Acts 23, we read in verse 10, and then I want us to study verse 11, but in verse 10, And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, now, of course, this is when the uh, they had the great uproar and uh, they were about to tear Paul into pieces. Now, you can rest assured that his mind went back to the day that he stood and he watched them stone Stephen. And you can rest assured that the mind of Paul went back to many occasions when he arrested believers and he dragged them into prison. Now they are about to tear him to pieces, but the soldiers rescue Paul. Now in verse 11, here's what I want us to see. And the night following, the Lord stood by him. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified to me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now, I've made this, I've made this statement before, uh, since we've been studying the book of Acts. I've made this statement before. God's servant is indestructible. You cannot destroy God's servant until God is finished with him. If a minister, if a Christian, I don't care whether they are a minister or not, doesn't make any difference. If a born-again child of God will live right and give God first place in his or her life, if you'll serve God with a pure heart and serve God with all of your soul, you are indestructible. The devil cannot destroy you. The devil cannot annihilate you. The devil can't kill God's servant until God's through with him. Now let me read it again. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. Cheer up, Paul. Amen. Now later in the 27th chapter of Acts, we find that Paul went down in the hull of the ship and he prayed and he said, God sent an angel. God spoke to him and he said, I believe God. Then he went up and told the sailors to be of good cheer. And they, first of all, of course, God told Paul to be of good cheer. Then he told the sailors to be of good cheer. Now then, I thank God that this man, this man, Saul of Tarsus, whom the Lord saved on the road to Damascus and called to be the minister to the Gentiles, I'm glad that he gives to us, under the inspiration of God, some of the dearest and some of the most precious promises to saints that we find in all the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Now let me say this before I go further. Jesus was made in all things as we are. Now, I I appreciate Jesus. I appreciate him uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart and the depths of my soul. But I don't believe I would appreciate Jesus quite as much as I do if Jesus had not come into the world in a body like my body. You see, if you've never been put to the test that some other person has been put to, don't criticize them for falling or faltering. In other words, don't condemn a man for faltering if you've never been put to the test that the man was put to that fell. Now, by that, I hope I'm getting across to you what I mean. Jesus was tempted in every respect, in all points as we are. He was made in all things like unto his brethren. That is Hebrews chapter 2, I believe it's verse 17, right in that section. Hebrews 2, 17. Jesus was made in all things like unto his brethren, so that he could be a faithful, a faithful high priest. He could be faithful to God, and he could know our feelings. He was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. Now, that makes me appreciate Jesus more and more, and a lot more than I believe I could appreciate him if he had been an angel, or if he had never left heaven, if he had never come into the world. You see, he lived here. He lived here. He walked on the same dirt. 
that we walk on. He was tempted by the same devil. He met the devil face to face. And so he knows how to deliver us from temptation. And he knows how to strengthen us when we are weak. Now I said all that to read this tremendous verse that is pinned down by the Apostle Paul. And I don't think any other person, even under inspiration, could have been more suited or fitted to pin down the words that I'm about to read. In Acts 8.28 we read, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And then verse 31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And then verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Whoever had more trials and tribulation than Saul, or Paul, of course, after he was converted, whoever had more and more severe trials than the Apostle Paul? No one except Jesus Christ. Therefore, he could say, even if he were not writing under inspiration, this is inspired. Certainly it is inspired. But even if Paul was writing just as a man, who would be more fitted and who would be better qualified to say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No, sir. No, sir. He was beaten. He was stoned. He was dragged outside the city for dead. He was put in the dungeon. He was chained to a soldier. He suffered. He had trials. He had tribulations. He had heartaches and heartbreaks as no man ever had except Jesus. And yet these things did not separate Paul from the love of God. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril of sword? No, he said, as it is written, for thy sake we're killed all day long. We're counted sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. When he came down to the end of his life's journey, he could look death square in the face and he could say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness and not for me only, but for all who love his appearing. So this man could say, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I ask, I ask who, who beloved friends were who could have been, who could have been better fitted, more qualified to speak those words than the man that they almost tore to pieces. If the soldiers had not protected, even though the soldiers were ungodly men, even though the soldiers were not God-fearing men, and they were not, they were not God-fearing men, they were not Christians, but beloved, God compelled them. Yes, sir, God compelled them uh, to protect uh, Paul. And if they had not, they would have torn him to pieces. Back in Acts 23, and I read verse 10, where the soldiers uh, protected him. They were about to uh, pull Paul into pieces, pull his arms off, pull his legs off, and tear him to bits. And the soldiers rescued him. And the next night, the Lord stood by him, and said, Cheer up, Paul, be of good cheer. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? If God be for us, who can be against us? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And then some of us poor, little, weak, spineless Christians. One little thing come along. We throw up our hands and we say the way's too hard. I just can't live it. There's just too much to give up. There's just too much to suffer. I just can't keep on. And we throw up our hands and backslide. I tell you frankly, I think that about 99% of the people who quit so easily have never been born again. Now I know there is much to discourage us. I know that. And there are many heartaches and heartbreaks and trials. I know that. But beloved, if we are really saved by God's grace, then we should think as Paul did, I'm doing this for the glory of God. I'm doing this in Jesus' name. And it doesn't make any difference what comes or goes. We know that all things, all things work together for good to them that love God. I love God. And regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes, regardless of what happens to me, I know that it's for my good and it's for God's glory. Listen again as this man speaks the man that they were about to tear to pieces, snatch off his arms, snatch off his legs, and gouge out his eyes. Listen what he said. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. Now, oh God help me, oh God help me, not to fret, 
not to fret. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. There are a lot of things I, I, that I could say I wish I had. There are a lot of things I'd like to have. God's been good to me. Don't misunderstand me, brother. God's been good to me. But I could name 25 things. I could name, I could name 50 things in the next three minutes that I'd like to have. I don't have the money to buy them. I don't have the money. I, I, but listen, God knows, you see, and it's for my good, it's for God's glory. But I don't have everything that I'd like to have. But neither did Paul, neither did, neither has any other, uh, true dedicated servant that I know anything about. Never, I don't know of any dedicated, separated, spirit-filled, God-loving, devil-hating, gospel-preaching preacher that ever had, that ever had everything he wanted. I don't know anybody like that. There are a lot of things I'd like to have. But I don't have the money to buy them. And God knows and it's His business. It's none of my business. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't covet. Don't say, I wish I had a new automobile. Don't say, I wish I had a larger house or a more roomy house. Don't say, I wish I had finer clothes. Now, when God gets ready for you and when God gets ready for me to have these things, He's able to supply it. He's able. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't be, as a, listen, as a Christian, as a Christian, you bring reproach upon the name of Jesus by saying, I wish I had this and I wish I had that. And I sure do wish I could trade cars. And I sure do wish that I could trade houses. And I sure do wish, I sure do. Well, listen, just remember, that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above anything you think or ask. And if we live right and walk right and pray right, God will give us the necessities of life and God will supply our need and that's all God ever promised anybody. Now, be content with such things as you have for He has said, that is Jesus, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that should be, that should be enough to satisfy anybody. I will never leave thee, I'll never forsake thee. Verse 6, I'm reading in Hebrews, don't think he even told you. Hebrews 13, 5, and now I'm reading verse 6. Hebrews 13, 6, so that we may boldly say, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is my helper, and I'll not be afraid. I'm not afraid of man, because the Lord is on my side. Now, don't be covetous, but be content and be bold. Now, there's a sermon right there. Don't covet and be content and always stand up boldly and say, The Lord is my helper and I'm not afraid. Now, listen to the same man. This man, the Apostle Paul, as he speaks to us in Philippians. And here's what he said. Now, watch it. But I rejoice in the Lord. This is Philippians 4.13. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourish again, wherein ye were so careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Oh, God, give me grace to learn that. God, help us, those of us who are believers, those of us who name the name of Jesus, those of us who are followers of Jesus, help us to say with Paul, I've learned, I've been in the school of God, I sat at the feet of Jesus, and I've learned with the Apostle Paul to be content with what I have. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer need. Now, this is Paul testifying. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, as concerning giving, and when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only, you folks at Philippi. Now, watch this. For even in Thessalonica, sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, no, 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 but I desire fruit that ye that may abound to your account. Paul said, not that I need it, not that I want it, but he said, I want you. I want you to have fruit and have a reward. Now in verse 18, Philippians 4, 18, but I have all, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received 
the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, sacred scepter, well pleased to God. Now here's the verse that I've been trying to get to. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. For my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory, Paul said, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now then, I want you to hear the dying words of this man. This man that they would have torn to pieces. They would have torn his arms off, his legs off. They would have gouged his eyes out if the soldiers had not rescued him. And of course, God compelled them to do it. They were sinners. They were unbelievers. But God compelled them to take Paul and deliver him from the mob that would have torn him to bits. Then he said, we know that all things work together for good. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of God? We are more than conquerors. Then he said, my God shall supply all of your need. I've learned in whatsoever state I am therein to be content. Now listen what he says in 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 6. For I'm now ready. I'm now ready to be offered... The time of my departure is imminent. The time of my death is any minute. Any second of any minute, they'll kill me. They'll cut my head off. Now, these are the words of a dying man. These are the words of a man who has been tried, convicted, condemned, and he's waiting for the executioner. It'll only be a matter of minutes until he'll be his head will be chopped off. He, his head will fall in a basket, and his blood will run to the ground. Here are the words of a dying man. Listen, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, I believe Paul preached every sermon God wanted him to preach. I believe Paul wrote every word God wanted him to write. I believe Paul witnessed to every person God wanted him to He said, I have finished my course. And I believe Paul, I believe this man is one of the few that could come down to death and look up at heaven and say, I have done everything that God asked me to do. I've done everything that God wanted me to do. I have preached. I've taught. I've done everything. I have finished my course. Now, if I should die today, I wonder if I have finished my course. I wonder if I've done everything that God wanted me to do. I fought a good fight, finished my course, kept faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly, for Demas hath forsaken me. Yes, yes, some of his best friends, some of his dearest friends, let him down. But he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. This is the man, this is the man that would have been torn to pieces if the soldiers had not rescued him from the mob. Acts 20, Acts 23 rather, where this great man, this great apostle, the minister to the Gentiles, was rescued from death because his ministry was not finished. See, he said, I have finished my course. Now, if you'll study the life of Paul, you'll see that he did a lot of things, preached a lot of gospel and pinned down a lot of epistles after he was rescued by the soldiers. And the night following, the night following, Acts 23, 11, the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now, if you're discouraged today, study the life of Paul. Look at Paul. Follow him and hear him as he groans under the Roman lash, beaten three times, he said, stoned and dragged outside the city for dead. He was shipwrecked. He was in jail, in prison. He was chained to a soldier. He was in the dungeon. He suffered as no man except Jesus Christ has ever suffered. If you're discouraged, remember the same Lord that stood by Paul is standing by you right now. You don't see him. The Bible doesn't tell us that Paul saw him. He spoke to Paul. He has spoken to you today through the word of God that I've read. Jesus has spoken to you through the word that I've read on the radio. So take comfort and be of good cheer because the same Lord that stood by Paul 
is standing by you. Father, encourage the discouraged, strengthen the weak, and build up the feeble-minded and those who are weak in faith. Build them up in the Lord Jesus and save the soul that's nearest hell. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.